Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's Local Chat. It's episode 80. Joining me today, as always, the one and only Ian Gibson. Uh, hi, hi, Echo. Echo. Oh, am I echoing? There's, There's just, just a, a little, little music. Music, is. music. Oh, I know why. Now it's yeah. not just the music. Now you're good. Ah, there we go, folks. <laughs> Sorry. I was sending it to you twice. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, should I call it out or not? And then I realized it may just keep happening throughout the stream. Mm. No, it is. Um, so I was sending you audio virtually through voice meter. And then I was also sending you audio through my microphone uh, physically. Oh, yes. So, yes. Uh, that is what was happening there. Uh, anyways, joining me, Ian Gibson is here. Hi, I'm back. He's back. Hi. And speaking of back, let's uh, have him back. Jake's here two weeks in a row. Jake Terrio. I also have a back. He also has a back. We've confirmed the beast with two backs is here, folks. Uh, and it's on Twitch. God, I love that <laughs> phrase. It's so a great much. phrase. It's My just like, professor dropped that in college one day and i was just blown i was like hell yeah <laughs> it's like the way a child in medieval europe described seeing his parents having sex to like the beast with two backs a renaissance writer i saw mommy two backs in santa claus <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of renaissance writers um i, I was watching a show uh I, uh I forget what it's called love on the spectrum it's a Netflix show about uh, yeah. people on the spectrum dating. It's actually genuinely adorable, and I think these people are way better than the trash on 90 Day Fiance. Sounds exploitative. Uh, <laughs> it, you, not? you would think it like the producer is there and like actively involved and like chatting with mm. them like from behind the scenes. And because at first I thought it was pretty much like that, but like one person d gets embarrassed in front of the cameras, so they make sure to like take a break between stuff. I like really respect mm -hmm. that, like knowing some reality TV shows. But anyways, the they had a narrator who pr clearly was just reading, obviously the narration, and didn't know that a Renaissance fair is a thing because they said Renaissance fare, and I was mm. like, oh, <laughs> this is someone who has no idea what a Renaissance <laughs> fair. Couldn't is. get a second take. I know that means fare. all of the producers in the room didn't know what a Renaissance fair was. Jesus, or Haven't it was like Malcolm in the Middle, <laughs> or or like the VO artist recorded it all like in one go at the in their own home and sent True. the stuff, and they're like, we don't have time, we have to get the episode out. <laughs> Renaissance yeah. fare. Um, yeah, I just. I thought that was funny. Uh, folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about all of the things gaming related and otherwise. Uh, first, we got to talk about what we have been playing. Uh, I have not been playing much else other than The Outer Worlds. Uh, I just finished. Uh, I, I'm on vacation, so I spent about seven hours today just playing Outer Worlds. Uh, I finished The Peril at, Peril at Gorgon or on Gorgon, the first DLC um genuinely riveting uh uh not quite like there were some things that i guessed but there were still a couple things that surprised me uh but the other thing that i've shouted out about this game i think everyone basically knows about this game is the writing's fantastic and sort of the ways you can do like i do everything diplomatically now because i have mm -hmm. such high I actually respect my character to have higher persuasion um, so I like basically persuade people to just do things and in fallout and, uh, like Skyrim and stuff, persuasion just felt like a way of skipping parts of quests where in this game, it feels like, um, giving you new avenues in the quest and places, mm -hmm. places you might end up, uh, else like some other way, but it, they present it in a way that makes it feel fresh, um, and I really, I really respect that from a standpoint where, like, you can play some of those games and you can tell when both options are exactly the same. They're just worded a little bit differently. Uh, and this is clearly not one of those games. So I'm enjoying it. I, I'm on to the second bit of DLC because I just hit what I think is the point of no return. The lady on the ship said, hey, you should try to finish up your business because you might end up in jail uh, if you do this mission. Um, oh yeah that's the end of the tutorial yeah yeah end of the tutorial perfect 
because then you go to jail and then you wake up in Skyrim uh, in the jail. Yeah. Um, so I'm having a blast with it. Again, it, it has its issues, um, but it just the more I play it, the more I'm excited for um, Outer Worlds 2 uh, and excite and hopeful for Starfield if they uh, can kind of up their game from what they've done in sort of yeah. respect to uh, what Obsidian's done with this game. I want I want more studios to uh, just say fuck off Bethesda. We're gonna steal your formula and do our own spin on it. Because um, Obsidian doing that with the Outer Worlds is great. It's great. I mean, like you said, it's not a perfect game, but it's different enough, but also similar enough that it's like hell yeah, scratch that itch, but in a different way. Um, and honestly, like we've talked about this a lot, I'm a little tired of Bethesda but I'm not tired necessarily of that format. Yeah. So let's, let's let some other people have a crack at it. You know? Yeah, totally. It's, it's fun. It's exciting. And, um, it, yeah, like I said, the gameplay and we've said this several times, it's just that writing. It just keeps having me come back and I'm like, you'll watch me play and I'm a killer. I skip dialogue all the time because I can read it faster than they talk. Um, so when you watch me play these games, it just looks like I don't care about anything, but I'm just like yeah. reading it rather than waiting for them to say it. Uh, and it's, it's good. I like, I'm uh, a lot of the stuff I'm also trying to consciously not do that because the, some of the performances are really well done. Uh, and like jokes land better when they're like said by the voice actor. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll probably finish it up hopefully before my vacation ends. Uh, and before Starfield comes out. Um, yeah. so that's, that's what I've been playing Ian. Uh, do you want to hit up what you have been playing? Yes. Uh, I played a little bit more of last call BBS. Um, we talked about this last week and the week before this final farewell game. You log into a fake computer, log onto a BBS, a fake BBS network and you get seven or eight games they have in there. Um, I got my first solitaire win. I felt great. Woo. I don't I don't know what it is about that solitaire game in last call. It's not even doing anything special. It's just solitaire, but it just feels real good. Um, it just continues to be if you're into Zactronics, if you're into like wonky, difficult puzzle games. Hell yeah, that's that's your jam because it's not just that, but it's multiples of that in multiple different puzzle formats. And it's also just packaged real nicely. Logging into the BBS, logging into the computer. So definitely, it's it's on Xbox Game Pass. So um, if you don't have Game Pass, get Game Pass and then download uh, Last Call BBS and play it. Uh, the other game I've been playing, I don't want to talk about it too much, but I will tease it a little. <gasps> teensy tease. Weensy. I have been playing Pokemon White because Poke Will Season 2 will be returning in September with Pokemon White. Um, and it actually worked out really well last time where I played Fire Red right before Will played it. And that it gave me a lot of information and insight that I needed to be second chair during the stream. So if you got stuck or you're like, what does this do? I could usually answer the question off the top of my head instead of having to look up every single answer. Um, so I'm doing the same thing. I'm playing Pokemon White first and then Will's going to start it on stream for Pokewell season two in September. Uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. It's doing a lot of things differently. Um, I haven't played a DS game in a while, and DS games for me always were like a little. It's one of those things where it's like, I want you to use the second screen creatively. Typically, the bottom screen is treated as the second screen, mm -hmm. but I also don't want to always have to use it, and I don't want to be annoyed by it because going back and forth between the screens and having to pull out the stylus for some things is annoying. But Pokemon White so far is doing it great. We're basically, I mean, it's a Pokemon game. There's all this information you want on screen at the same time. And they're not displaying 100% of it. I think I think Arceus, uh, I'm sorry, Arceus did that best. But this one does a pretty good job of being like, hey, we're not going to crowd the main cinematic screen. We're going to have a lot of the menus and stuff below on the second screen. And a lot of it you can still very easily hit with the buttons or with your fingers or with your stylus. So just in terms of a DS game, there's always that trepidation I have where I'm like DS, 3DS game. I'm like, are you are you going to make this really annoying and like try and really use like the second touchscreen gimmick a lot? And this one's not. It's great. It's using it really, really well. So I'm enjoying it. I think I'm three badges in. I'm about to take on the fourth badge. Having a lot of fun. 
just a solid Pokemon game. That was my travel game. I think I played like six hours the first day just traveling. And then uh, during the trip, uh, just picking it up at the end of the Oh, God. Ian, I've lost you. I'm here. Hi. I can hear him. Uh, that was weird. I don't know why I lost you. Okay, you're back. Did you lose anything important? Uh, Well, you was you talking. So you no. said I started playing Pokemon White. <laughs> yeah. And then no, no, no you I, I honestly don't know where you dropped off. It was like it was like three seconds of, of audio. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, it's not worth anything. But speaking of playing, Jake, uh, I see some games on here that you have been playing. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I uh, in in the year of our Lord, 2022, I purchased myself an Xbox and got Yay. Game Pass and immediately downloaded um, many hundreds of gigabytes worth of video games. Hell yeah. Um, so the first thing I did was, uh, although the first thing I downloaded was Master Chief Collection, which itself is like 130 gigs or something. Um, and I started replaying Halo Reach because that's my favorite Halo. Um, and I played, I think, two or three missions. I just did the one where you, um, well, obviously the first one, they discover the Covenant on Reach and then blah, blah, blah. You infiltrate the sword base and then you're there's like a sniper mission. Um, I might be mixing up the order. Got I just it. played and, it. And, but end of the tutorial. Got it. Essentially, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I wanted to press pause because there was other stuff I wanted to do. Um, like uh, Sable, the Shedworks game that I think was day one Game Pass uh, yep. fall of last year. Um, that had been on my radar forever. Like since they announced it, I want to say maybe two years prior to that. I can't 100% remember. Um, it's uh it's super neat aesthetically and oh God, the does that sounds so negative <laughs> well so i don't know if maybe i overhyped it in my head but i feel like i did everything that there was that was able to be done in the game mechanically within like the first hour or two um but then looking it's open world um, and looking at the map, I'm like, there's still a lot of this map I haven't touched. Um, but I don't, they haven't been introducing anything new as the game has gone on. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, well, it was, you know, I had fun like in exploring that first little bit and learning all the systems, but then I felt like I did everything. I didn't do everything, but I did everything mechanically. Um, so I'll probably go back to it every now and then um, to try to get through the um, the rest of the narrative. Um, but for a game that was essentially made by two people in a shed, um, pretty good. Um, and it looks like, uh oh, if you no, and I'm, I are here I'm, without I'm Will, good, I'm does good. that okay? I was worried that everyone had been booted from <laughs> the stream. No, you're good. I was trying to fix something and forgot it would um, quit Google Chrome. <laughs> it's if you're a fan of um, art by French science fiction artist Mobius, it's definitely mm -hmm. worth exploring because um, it's got that kind of like minimalisty, pastelish kind of texture to it. Um, yeah, I could ramble yeah. a little bit longer, I, but that's about it. I feel like part of me. Part of me wants to diss that game because because you're right, it doesn't have a lot of mechanical depth in it. But part of me is also recognizing that this game has no combat. The game is not about conflict necessarily. Mm -mm. And the game is all about exploration. Mm -hmm. And so and so it's not necessarily about the mechanics, like all these things where I'm like, oh, it doesn't have this. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have that. It's like, well, the game didn't want to do that. Yeah, and that doesn't mean the, that doesn't mean the game is perfect. The game is a 10 out of 10, but it's it's it has established itself as something different and that makes it challenging to, mm -hmm. to embrace the game. I, it definitely still has its shortcomings, but when I think about the moments of exploration that I did enjoy in that game, it, it was just, it, it's like, I, I think at the time when, when Kyle and I were talking about it on local chat, it's just weird playing that game and there's, there's no tension at all because mm -hmm. you're not like, I can't go here because I'm afraid of dying or of losing my resources. But that lack of tension 
made me slightly tense because I didn't really know how to interact with the game. And that's not the game's fault. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's so counter to the norm that it's hard to, in, it it's hard really to play the game how. objectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had, yeah. I think much that same feeling that I realized I was, you know, flying around and exploring and going into areas that in another game that would be like, oh, that's the high level area. It's a little far. Yeah, I gotta be it's a little careful. beyond the mountains. I'm going to die. Um, yeah. But like, I, well, nothing's stopping me from going here. Even like narrative reasons, like, like that, um, uh, the avalanche Mad Max game where you had to like knock down gates between parts of the yeah. world to get, even though functionally they weren't any more or less difficult than anywhere else. Um, but yeah, I I really respect it. It's it's a novel, a concept, and a neat idea to you know more. I feel like more and more indie developers are deliberately making games without violence, um, as kind of well, what can what can we do with that format? Um, but um, yeah, I'll go back to it. But it didn't capture me perhaps as I wanted it to, or it wanted me to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of that that like screenwriting rule where it's like you always need to have conflict. That's what drives the story forward. Mm -hmm. And part of me is like, well, I don't like rules, so fuck you. I'm not going to have conflict. <laughs> but the other part of me is like, you know, you do kind of need a little something to something push to you drive forward, it. Yeah. To, to challenge you a little bit, you know. And yeah. I think Sable is a little bit too much on the lack of mm -hmm. side. Yeah. yeah. Um. Flip side, I guess, a game with a lot of combat and a lot of interesting, neat combat. Um, Nobody Saves the World, which yeah. I downloaded because it is on. It was uh, an Ian inclusion on the potential game of Subpixel Game of the Year list. And so we are all obligated to play those games. And I Forced. downloaded it and I'm like 10 hours into it. <laughs> It's fantastic. It's yeah, it's great. It's 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 really fun and it's really neat. Um, initially, when I first got to the kind of the the transform tree of all the different kinds of things, and I started getting them and just being like, it's a lot of options. I was initially kind of overwhelmed, um, but it cleans itself up fairly fast and yeah. allows you a little bit of um, modularity with um, being able to kind of format each of your various shape-shifting entities to whatever play style that you're interested in or for the the um, conditions of the parts of the world that you're exploring. Um, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm not necessarily seeing it as a gaudy contender, um, but it's super well, fun. Just to be clear, this is top 10 contender sure it will likely be in my top 10 of 2022 yeah. Yeah. Um, so that just to be clear that's the list we're talking about is we have a list behind the scenes where you put a game on the list because you think it may make the top 10 game of the year list at the end of the year and kind of the obligation is if somebody puts a game on the list everybody else has to play it for a, a predetermined minimum amount of time so that we can mm -hmm. all speak with authority on these games yeah yeah i'm i'm certainly I'm not necessarily anticipating it being number one just because I'm not seeing anything that's going to unseat Citizen Sleeper throughout the rest of the year, at least for me personally. Um, but super fun, and I'm, I'm, I am I want to dive back into it as soon as I can. Um, I'm, what's, your favorite, what's your favorite character so far? Your favorite film? Oh, I, I still have, I think, like uh, maybe like five or six to unlock. Right now, I'm, I'm maybe torn between um the the ghost and the turtle <laughs> turtle turtle's pretty turtle's, good I remember um, the turtle. yeah. yeah i'm i but i'm like obviously you know looking ahead and seeing what you have to upgrade to get to what else um yeah yeah i i actually i just i unlocked the slug forever ago but i actually just transformed into it for the first time and the slug was really fun slugs that playing. was one of my one of my first favorites yeah yeah but um yeah, it's just I don't I don't think I'd played anything I don't think I've played anything else by that studio. I went and I I googled cuz there were parts of it that felt really familiar. Like yeah. I was like maybe these devs have done something before that I have played before. There were like sound effects and whatnot that were very familiar to me. 
that seemed like maybe they had come from something else. Um, I don't know, for whatever reason, the money pickup sound makes me think exactly of when you sell a gun to a vending machine in Borderlands. Um, I'll have to listen to them side by side, but that was immediately what my brain thought of. And there have been a couple that. others that have that have popped into my head as I've heard them. Um, but um, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Nice. I I, I didn't um, mean to talk so long. No, that's fine. I I uh, sorry. I was trying to fix some things during that. Uh, but the nobody saves the world is one of those games. I got to like a a point where I got stuck because I think the. The next thing I wanted to do was like a bit higher level, so I need to go back into that game and uh, and uh, really give it a, another shot. Ian, I did check. I think I'm like 45 minutes less than what the amount you played, so I think I'm good for game of the year, but I do want to yeah. go back to it, um, and I think that leaves room for like o- October, November when I want to like revisit some of the earlier games of the of the year, so I like have them a little bit fresher. That gives me a good jumping off point for that. Yeah. And I mean, you don't have to finish it. I think I've got like 20 plus hours in the game and I'm not near finishing it. And I don't think I'm going to go back, but I absolutely enjoyed my time with it. You, you, uh, let's be clear. You don't have to have finished a game to review it, let alone talk. About no, it no, game. I'm not saying that. I'm yeah. saying I want it's making me want to go finish it, which is a good yeah, thing. I, about the game. I think if things were really slow, I would go back to it. But Man, I just got a PS3 on my doorstep today, so I got too much <laughs> stuff going on. Got too... Armored Core to play. Yeah, I know. Jeez. Until FromSoft announces the new one. Yeah, <sighs> then you're shit out of luck because they delete the old ones. Damn uh, it. Well, I, I had to buy a PS3 to play this one, so it's basically deleted. <laughs> yeah, you better make Chris pay you back for doing that. Um, I think that's everything we've been playing, which means it's time to do the news, which is time to play the news theme. So I'm going to hit the long news version. button. One. I'm gonna hit, long version. I'm going to hit the I'm going to hit the news button. Here's the news. It's gaming news. Oh, yeah. We're talking it's in a about slightly news. different key. What's up news? But now there's more to the song so you can sing along and it won't bore you though. Unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean but we don't want to have a vocal spat so let's bring it back to your local chat Thanks Zach I hate that version so much <laughs> Love it. It's not even that long It's, it's twice not. as long as the other one The other one was too short Anyways I don't agree uh, anyways, folks, it's time for the news. First up, I, uh, I want to thank uh, Ian for putting all the news in here because we were on vacation. I sure as heck didn't put it in here. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I you. just I was worried that we would have no news because of that. Where basically we were on vacation from Saturday through Wednesday, which is like a majority of the news that we gather. And so I was like putting too much in here just to make sure we didn't forget anything. Yeah, there's some real shit in here. Um, yeah. First off, uh, PlayStation Studios welcomes Haven into the fold of Sony. Um, Haven this Studios. Was already known. I believe this is just the finalization of the deal. This is Jade Raymond's studio out of Montreal, I believe. Yes, right. close, close to home. Uh, uh, so they're working on something. Yeah, they don't have anything out. They've, they've put nothing out, correct? Because it's a brand new studio. That's, that's correct. I, I am going to... Uh, I feel like we did this last time, but I feel like it's worth doing again. Let's talk about the games that Jade Raymond has been involved in. Let's do it. Uh, she was a producer on The Sims Online. Nice. A producer on Assassin's Creed. Great. She was executive producer on Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Bloodlines, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist, and Watch Dogs. Great. She was... Managing director on Assassin's Creed Unity, Far Cry 4. Great. She was also executive producer for The Mighty Quest for Epic Loot, as well as uh, senior vice president, group general manager for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oof. Battlefront 2. 2? Two. Two, two? Yes. Yeah. Not the good Yes, two. that's right. I, uh, yes. So, I don't know. I feel like she's got some bangers in here, like Assassin's Creed. Watch Dogs was at least something interesting and unique and new, so I'll give her for that. But on the other hand, it's like uh, she's not quite a one-hit wonder, but 
I don't I don't know. This feels like a risk for Sony to basically acquire a whole studio on the back of this person and the team they've built around them and saying they're going to make a new IP. I don't know how are you guys feeling. You think this is going to pay off? Uh, Maybe. I could see it. I mean, it's all, you know, the concept and gameplay. What's, yeah. What are they going to be? And that's fair. I, Sony's probably seen it at this point because uh, according to, to Wikipedia, it was 2021 was when they announced that they're investing in the studio to create a new IP for PlayStation. And then a year later, they announced that they're acquiring the studio. So that kind of reads to me like they liked the pitch. They mm-hmm. gave them some money. They liked how things were going so well. They decided to acquire them. So this this could be good. This could be good. Yeah. I think this isn't a blind bid. This is something that that they've got to have something cooking there that has gotten Sony interested. Unfortunately for me, I don't like Sony games right now. So probably not for me, but it could be something good. You like Gran Turismo? They definitely said new IP and not like not like an established Sony property, right? New new original IP. Okay, yeah. So it's not like they're working on something from Sony's library, and then Sony was like, "Let's just bring that in house." They're doing uh, Last of Us Part Two remaster. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Part three remastered. Remastered, remastered. Three um, yeah. Yeah, that makes me wonder if, like, S- Sony really thinks their new IP aligns with their existing stuff or, like, their tone, which makes me think that's kind of why they jumped in on it. Big um, and cinematic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all of her games, Minimal like you read control. off, are very cinematic, mm-hmm. darker, like Blacklist. Um, yeah. Those... Assassin's Watch Creed Dogs. 2, Watch Dogs, Technology. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't be Triple surprised a. if it, it's one of those sort of like infamous second son, everyone's watching you type type games. Because um, that kind of seems yeah. to be their bread and butter. Uh, speaking of Assassin's Creed, though, I know you put it at the end, but uh, there was a article going around how Ubisoft was removing Assassin's Creed Liberation from, I believe it was Steam? It was Steam. They were delisting it and preventing owners from accessing it. But we talked about this a little bit. This isn't really a news story because basically Ubisoft came out and said, I'm sorry, Ubisoft came out and said, hey, don't worry, you're still going to be able to play it. So So, part of me wonders if that was just their response being like, hey, we can leave these servers on for another year and then turn them off and not say anything. Or they were actually going to do this the whole time. Uh, Is it is it a multiplayer game that requires servers? No, it is a. No, I mean the server space to allow people to download it. Um, oh, what? But it's Steam hosting it, so right. It's, but, that's not Ubisoft. But the whole thing was it's a single player DLC game that they were removing the ability to da- re-download. Put no, it on, no, like, but that's Dropbox. No, 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 no. It's through Steam though, right? Yeah. So Ubisoft is not hosting it. It's on the Steam Valve's platform. Got it. Ubisoft pays nothing to host it up there. But. I... I'm just wondering why they were saying they were cutting off people being able to download. It was prob- it back it, I'm assuming it was it was a misstatement or a misunderstanding because they pretty quickly came out and said, no, 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 you can still play it. So I think it was somebody fat fingering the announcement. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because for you to go into a Steam game and say, I want this off the marketplace and remove access to it. Uh, this is an assumption here, but that that takes a lot of effort to do that. That's not just something you go in, you click a button on especially for a game this big. So uh, I, I think I think this was a, a bad announcement and it's not that they rolled it back. It's that they had to come out and correct it. Yeah, I just I mean, yeah, the, the purchasing makes sense because you have to keep generating keys. But I guess as far as downloading it, uh, that kind of makes they sense. probably just lost lost rights to parts of it so they can't have it for sale anymore. But you're still allowed to. That doesn't require you to pull access. Yeah, but it's Ubisoft. They can do it. They could do it. They're weird. Um, Sorry, I just want to hit that while the uh, iron was hot with the Assassin's Creed. Um, This next article, I thought, was really cool. I hadn't seen this. I'm assuming Ian put this here. But the Xbox Series X can now run one of the best retro versions of Windows. Um, XP? How dare you? Actually, XP is great. Uh, Windows 98. Uh, Ian, do, do you want to you want to speak to this a little bit? I didn't. I didn't read this. You didn't read it. Did you put it here? Yeah. And you didn't read. I was it. gonna say I didn't. I put read it. it. Here. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, 
<laughs> I just assumed you did with a combination of RetroArch and DOSBox and a copy of Windows 98 Digital Foundry showed uh, it running on an Xbox Series X. They played Turok, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Command and Conquer, Tiberian Sun. They were playing some other games. Uh, he was using a controller to move the mouse around. Uh, and I think he hooked up a keyboard. I I, I didn't listen yeah. to the video. I just watched it. Uh, it looked think, really cool. Like it ran great. Yeah, there, there's two key winners in this article. Number one is RetroArch. Basically, RetroArch is a, a program that lets you run a whole bunch of emulators and stuff. And uh, they've done a really good job of, I don't want to say commercializing it, but propagating it and making it very easy to install RetroArch pretty much anywhere. Like I was reading an article yesterday about my PlayStation Classic, you know, the, the mini PlayStation 1 console. And one of the things you can easily do with it is install RetroArch on it. And then through RetroArch, you can run a bunch of emulators. Um, the other big win here is for Microsoft because they haven't locked down their system extensively. So you can do these things within the bounds of the system. You don't have to break the system or, or mod it to get to this point or, you know, break kernel or things like that. Compromise security on the system. And, uh, like you said, plugging in the mouse and keyboard and stuff like Microsoft's, uh, embrace of accessibility for games, including like special controllers, all sorts of controllers, et cetera, makes it easy for them to do these types of things. You know, you don't really want to use Windows 98 with a controller, but you can plug a mouse and keyboard in and use it that way. So it's it's definitely just a cool little cool little story. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, Microsoft is like uh, offering this. It's $19 to uh, add your Xbox into developer mode. Uh, the article does mention you can sideload it, but the... Uh, Digital Foundry says not to do that because you could risk banning your Xbox Live account. But what's $19 to enjoy a plethora of retro games on your modern console, Sony? Yeah, uh, Mr. Yeah. Tycoon on my TV would be pretty good. Yeah, I feel like that would be really good, but I have been... Um, taint, what's the word? I have been blanked by Burn. Open Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah. It's like, that's really great and i can't go back i can't go yeah. backwards now yeah uh, which kind of sucks oh god i added a note no i don't want to do that um next up cancel doom 4 footage this one also caught my eye did you read this one ian did you watch the footage i did i did i looked at it um so this was doom 4 prototype footage Basically, uh, they were calling it Call of Doom because it's Doom with a lot of Call of Duty inspiration. Mm -hmm. And they ended up canning it in 2013 because it just wasn't working for the Doom aesthetic. And I think that's fair. It's, it's always interesting to see these early. Uh, it's not super early, but like these prototype uh, versions of games. It's uh, something that's very important in software, but super important in video game design is iterations and prototyping mm -hmm. so that you don't get too far down one development path before you realize, Hey, this isn't working. These mechanics aren't working. This doesn't feel good. This doesn't look good, etc. And so it's always interesting when those earlier versions come out and you get to see, Oh, that's what they were thinking. And that kind of led to what this did or, Hey man, they should make Doom more call of duty. And it's like, well, they did. And it turns out it wasn't that good. So just seeing all this little, all this little like tidbits from the, the game developer floor is, is, is really interesting. There's been there's been bits and pieces of this out in the world for a long time because um, I early on in Subpixels life cycle I did a video about this just based on the like the leaked stuff and bits of the video that had come out and I remember that one of the one of the pull quotes I found of um, one of the developers at ID talking about this was that it, it was uh, swir a swirling black hole of mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ um, wow um yeah it looks interesting uh doom 3 not my favorite doom uh it really only has one flaw which is the enemy spawning uh but this this looks close to do like that doom 3 plus call of duty uh and no clip put the video out and they also the thing i like no clip does is put the full gameplay video out separate from the uh from the their little video on it which they're little yeah because they had video. they they used some of this footage in their doom documentary when doom 2016 came out um so i guess they just took the whole uncut bit that they gathered from id at the time um and finally released it yeah i love doom 
I was going to bring this up later, but it's a good. I bought the Doom Two strategy guide in Canada. Hell yeah! Actually, Page Ian bought it for me because it was cash demons. only. Um, he wouldn't. He wouldn't buy it because he was a coward. And I said you have to. Buy no, it. I wasn't going to buy it because I didn't have any cash. And then you were like, "It was only Here's seventy-five cash. cents." Will it was only seventy-five cents American, fifteen Canadian. Canadian. Cents? Mm. Yeah, fifteen dollars Canadian. Well, the conversion uh, is seventy-five cents. Yeah, cents. So, um, <laughs> and do you tell me about Kingdom of the Blood? No, I didn't put this, this shit about on here. Did Jesus? I? It sounds you like did? a Jesus game. Did I? I didn't put anything on here, and I doubt Jake put oh, anything oh. on here. <laughs> this is, I now I know what this is. Did you guys watch the Netflix uh, South Korean zombie series called Kingdom? No, no, that's like ancient. It's like medieval Korea. I, I don't know when it takes place, but it's kind of like it's kind of like a Korean historical drama. But there's zombie <laughs> zombie invasion in the middle of so, it. So Korean I watched the first drama. season. It was actually pretty good. It was actually pretty good. Um, they are making a game for it. There's a couple things going on here. One that I need to look up that I'm not sure of, but. I don't know if you guys can take a perusal of the trailer real quick, but it's actually very stylish. It's like like a pseudo samurai type of thing. Uh, very stylish looking. Um, the other thing is, I believe this is a Netflix game. And if you remember, Netflix has oh, been making. Say. They have been making a slow and steady push. By Jake. Jake they have died. been making a a slow and steady push into video games. And originally it was just them. Uh, basically reaching out to studios and saying, we'll pay you some money, make a Stranger Things game. And then they said, we're going to have games, mobile games, but you can only access them through the mobile Netflix app. And now they are actively, it looks like, pushing out to other developers to make games based off of their Netflix properties. Oh, this looks really good. Right? Like, it's a good, you should watch season one. Season one's good. I, rem I remember season two, I dropped off just because I don't think I was in the mood for it. But it's a very good series. It was I. I can't believe you didn't know about it. It was. It was big no, at the time. I, I. I. I didn't know it by name, but Are now you that you explain, fuck off. Did you die? Now that you explain what it was. I remember. Um, yeah, this game looks neat. Shut up. I hate. Did you not? Did you not have internet? You what? You were time. following the cultural zeitgeist for that Jake, three day come back, period please. when it came out. I'm still here. I'm trying to. Uh, Ian said, "Go watch the trailer," and that You're ground my internet to a halt oh, it's okay good. my cpu is eating itself alive um it's actually it's at 30 percent now but it keeps going back up to 100 i don't know what i'm doing so wrong. anyways anyways if you like kingdom if you like samurai games if you like zombie games uh play this there's a new game coming out called kingdom of the blood and, and they it's samurai? continuing that i don't think they're technically samurai but it's the same type of sword play i believe <laughs> um <laughs> Oh, I love sword play in my movies. Uh, <laughs> but either way, there's weird things going on with Netflix and video games, and it continues to be weird. But maybe for the first time, we'll have something good come out of it. Maybe. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'll watch the show, Ian. I'll report back, and I'll let you know. Um, okay. Folks, uh, next cool. up, uh, Supermassive Games, developer of the Game of the Year contender, The Quarry. Uh, as it's oh, called, uh, have For keep forgetting. I have to play that <laughs> have in fact um, been acquired. Uh, would someone like to tell him about it? No, because I know I have not read pretty it much. Yet, will <laughs> I know pretty much nothing about the people who acquired them? And I will I'll have, you know, I read the article and I did research and I still know nothing it's not, about it's not Nord a typo for games. Nordic games. No, so, it is Nordisk, N-O-R-D-I-S-K games. Hmm. So the only thing I know about Nordisk games from the Googling I did before the stream and the Sounds refreshing like Googling I did right thing. now <laughs> is um, the fact that they do... Nordisk games. They own Avalanche Studios, the creators of Just Cause, oh. uh, a franchise that I that is near and dear to my heart. Um See, but now, if you told me the quarry was just another Just Cause game, I would be playing it immediately. <laughs> well, it is a just another Just Cause game in the sense that 
it is the same game as the rest of the other games Supermassive makes. <laughs> and and things happen just because you made them just happen. Cause. Oh, whoa! That's crazy! I still but loved our can't. argument where, where I think it was Jake. It was either Jake or Kyle was like, is this another like Man of Medan game? And you were like, no. And I was like, yes, it is. It's that, the same I, thing. I remember saying that. It's I remember right asking thing. that. But it's the same as saying, is this just another Factorio game? Is this just another card game? I don't know. That's not. Yes, that's like saying, it, is, it, is it another Telltale game? The answer is yes. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, but a Telltale game. It's the same thing as a if you know what the formula game. is, or a Traveler's <laughs> Tales Lego game. Yes, I know exactly. exactly. But you also what said, "Is this said. just another Dark Pictures game?" Which it is not. It, it, it I know the is question, a, and it's the answer a cinematic is yes. Game with quick time the answer is not yes. It's, 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 if you said until dawn, I would have agreed. It is not like Dark Pictures. Hey, okay, backing out of the joke anywhere. Mechanically, are there actually differences between Dark Picture and Man of Medan or whatever the fucking series are called games. They're mechanically the same, right? Yeah. Stru- yeah. I guess mechanically structurally. They're That's not my the same. point. That's but all video point. games are mechanically the same. No, no. Not. Use a controller. <laughs> no. Um, anyways, anyway, uh, good for them, I guess. I mean, this gives them, I guess, a little bit more independence. And at least this is not, uh, you know, take two or Sony or some other or EA or Activision. Um, and I, I've always appreciated Avalanche. They, they messed around a little bit. They struck gold with just cause two and they've been improving on it. They haven't been innovating as much as I would like, but they have been improving on just cause with just cause three and four. So sure. Yeah. Give that to super massive, give them the money and the stability to let them do what they do best and continue to get better at it. I would like a better Mad Max game though. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So does this just mean Nordisk will publish their games or they just own them and they'll still publish through other is it people? Like, is Nordisk like a, deep, like a deep silver type? Right, but they, yeah, so they own them. So they don't, Nordisk doesn't necessarily publish the games. They just own. I, I'm not sure, but but this is not a publishing deal. This is an acquisition. Yeah, I wasn't sure how that worked necessarily because they could still do stuff with 2K if they wanted to continue. Um, yeah, they could. I, although I guess I don't know how you would continue that storyline, but. Um, actually, I wonder if who publishes okay. the uh, Moving on, then. uh, Nintendo. Well, it's very shh, relevant. Shh. Nintendo tweet announced yet another game here. Kirby's Dream Buffet for Nintendo Switch. I saw this first and I told Will about it and I said, it's kind of like Fall Guys meets, uh, Katamari Damacy meets Super Monkey Ball and it's multiplayer Kirby. It's the roundest uh, Kirby has ever been. Absolutely. So basically you are playing these multiplayer games and you're getting bigger. Your Kirby's getting bigger and whoever has the biggest Kirby at the end wins. It's called Kirby's Dream Buffet. It's coming out to eShop at some point this summer. This looks like fun. I mean, I I, I don't think it's going to be amazing. I don't think it's going to be bad. But sure, if you throw it on eShop, especially if you throw it in that Nintendo Switch Online plan, Hell yeah. I'll mess around with it for a bit. I'll have some fun. What do you guys think? Yeah, I curly food. Cute. <laughs> Heck yeah. We Holy need more food. Katamari. I, I feel like Katamari is up there with the Nemesis system as one of those mechanics that is so brilliant and through the years has been horribly underutilized. You know, just the, I grabbing, need developer. the grabbing and pulling of things into a larger, grabbier thing. Just like the 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 roll to to collect to get bigger, you know, uh, the growth make me make me want to grow, you know, the and reverse donut county. Also, the scaling, the scaling too. Like as you go through the level, you just get bigger and bigger, and everything around you gets smaller and smaller. Mm-hmm. Like those ideas are fantastic, and I need other studios to just grab that idea and do something bonkers with it. Same with the Nemesis system. Um, and people just have not done that. And it's really upsetting. There's so many games that could be better with Katamari or Halo could use the Nemesis system. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to think what other, like, I feel like it's the the snowball effect. Yeah. Like when you, I like, I get why it's Katamari, but when, when you say Katamari, I think of things sticking to things, not things growing. Like I, I, like I was expecting to see things like Kirby eat the things and get bigger, but he just kind of like knocks into them. So I wonder, 
Um, but I, I think snowball is is a better term for yeah, it. Yeah, snowball. Yeah, for sure. Um, but even just even just even just the scale mechanic of like you start really small, and and as you play through the level, it's not like next level you're bigger, next level you're bigger. You're just slowly changing the scale of the environment around totally. you. Yeah, I like that. It's like spore, guys. I just was, like spore. I was literally about to say it's like spore. Oh, gotta find my collector's edition. I'm the creator of The Sims. Uh, Ian, you posted this thing about a hack. Um, you are the resident hacker of yes. Subpixel. Um, so there if you'd like to tell a, me about this, a Bandai Namco uh, hostage situation where basically there was some ransomware that took a bunch of information from Bandai Namco and said, we're going to release this unless you pay us money. And there are some items from that hack that have come out. The one that I'm looking at is from renowned leaker and journalist. Uh, this is an item they have. And I'm going to read through this calendar. Uh-oh. Quarter, this is from the Bandai Company Incorporated Major Titles Plan for FY 2020, 2023 release. Um... Again, this is not confirmed. Take this with a grain of salt. There was a ransomware attack. This then came out. Not a guarantee. Quarter one, 2023. Armored Core and Dragon Ball The Breakers. Now, this is fiscal year 2023, which means I believe later this year. I'm not sure how Bandai's fiscal calendar lines up, but this may be quarter four of this year. Armored Core and Dragon Ball The Breakers. Then crossover. Next quarter, Little Nightmares 3, Dragon Ball Fighter Z Super, which I assume is a sequel. Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth 2. Quarter after that, this is quarter three, FY 2023, which is, I think that, going off my rough estimate, that's like summer next year. Elden Ring Barbarians of the Badlands. Is that a DLC? I think DLC, I don't like the title. Let's just pause right there for a second and talk about I don't like that title. I Why? too alliterative? No, it's just it doesn't quite fit from software. Elden Ring. It's, it's too uh, it's too Ubisoft, honestly. I like it in the sense that it sounds like a 1970s and 80s Dungeons and Dragons novel. Um mm-hmm. but for, also from it, stuff it should be like bringer of the ephemeral night or something yeah it could also yeah, be a rough it should title. be more weird that's true well, i don't know because this, this it, would have been on internal do- i feel like you wouldn't put a temp title on internal docs but of all the logos here it looks like the most we wrote the elden ring logo logo and then wrote something else underneath it in the text of elden ring yeah same with um, armored core does little nightmares didn't i kind of forgot there was a sequel it doesn't strike me as a game with a formula deserving of a trilogy of released titles Uh, i don't know i mean i know very little about it but if there's money to be made milk 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 i think little nightmares but scary little nightmares has grown the somewhat uh and this is a weird comparison but somewhat of the freddy five nights at freddy's oeuvre where like people like they came out with a second mm-hmm. one and people were like oh let's keep playing the exact same game not necessarily right, to yeah. the, the pop culture side of Freddy uh, but the gamer side where they're like hey if we just keep making the same game not that it is the same game but I think it, it kind of worked out for them in the same way if they yeah. made a Limbo 2 I think it would have worked a Limbo so 2 is um, just inside yeah. inside Limbo 2 Let's uh let's finish out this leak. I don't think there's anything t- much interesting in here, at least for this crowd. Uh, continuing quarter three, fiscal year 2023, Tales of Ascension, Tekken 8, uh, the next quarter, Code Vein 2, One Punch Man Fighters Association, and Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3. A lot um, of Dragon Ball games. Yeah, I mean, I think the two takeaways here are Armored Core and Elden Ring. Armored Core definitely lines up with Armored what Core from Soft Question. Yeah, I mean, I mean... They they said recently they said hey we're our next game is in did they say post production like they were like it's yeah. basically done. He has a kid. I'm on stream. <laughs> he has a kid, everybody. Maggie's watching Forrest Gump. Apparently, she got to <laughs> that part. If you had asked me to guess what Maggie was talking about when she came in, movie? I would not have guessed I was Forrest Gump. Barely watching it, that movie is very weird. 
Yeah. Oh, that's a great long, movie. It's weird. It's got no. It's not a great movie. It's got too much questions. He, he what? Does, no, that's a fantastic a movie. It's it's. I don't know if you've watched it recently, but it is not the best Zemeckis film. No. Yeah, that's fair. It's but no back anyway, to the um, no, I think Armored Core is the big takeaway from this. They've been teasing it. I don't want to say they've been teasing it. They've been teasing something. People have been wanting it. It kind of lines up. Um, and we know there's Elden Ring DLC coming. Well, I don't want to say we know, but there's definitely yeah. strong assumption. So this is just nice to see out of a leak. Sorry they got hacked, but thanks for the info. Um, not uh, not to tread over trodden ground. Uh, you might have said this. Dragon Ball the Breakers. Is that the um, Dead by Daylight ish one? I that they showed I off. Think so. What? A I Dragon think so. Ball Dead by Daylight. Well, like asynchronous one v4, multiplayer. One Oh, I, I just use that as my my catch all. I, I think it is. I think and then Xenoverse Fighters is the fighting game, and I think Xenoverse is the. Or no, Xenoverse is not the story one. I have no. Idea. I know. I know. Fighters one. is the is the fighting game. It only made yeah. me laugh because Jake said something about a unlikely crossover, and I wasn't paying attention. And I saw Dragon Ball the Breakers, and I just went to the Breakers Newport Mansion. So I was just thinking of Dragon Ball Z in the Breakers Newport Mansion. No, it was whichever <laughs> one is in the same window as Armored Core. And oh, Ian okay. kind of shoved the title, the names of the titles together. <laughs> I just want to see 18th century people fending off against Dragon Ball Z characters. Uh, it would be very funny. Uh, moving on to the next uh, bit of the list. Ian was very excited about this. Uh, folks, Bayonetta 3. I look Nintendo's edgiest property. Did something happen with Twitter and their stats and their they started pumping them full of bullshit like Facebook did with their videos where all of a sudden all these companies think all they need to do to announce something is just put a tweet out there because Maybe. that's that's what Nintendo did. Granted, this isn't the first time they've done it, but now Sony's doing it. A lot of people are doing it. They just they just said, boom, ban out of three. Here's a new trailer release date. Ten twenty eight. Um, this should have been in a direct. This is a huge. It should have been in a direct. I don't know why they put it in a tweet. Nintendo does whatever they want. But regardless of that, Bayonetta three is coming. Y'all Bayonetta three fans. Y'all Bayonetta. Bayonetta. I have fans. never played a Bayonetta. I never played a Bayonetta. I played a little bit of two. It was pretty fun, but it wasn't for me. Um, I'm glad these fans are getting what they want, and this game does look bonkers. So I appreciate that. And. 1028 is kind of soon for a game that they weren't talking about for a while. So cool. I again, give me the hype. Give me the E3 presser. Stop with the tweet announcements. I am on the opposite side. I would rather have tweets all day instead of watching a video. No, that's because your job, you idiot. No, that's because I don't want to watch. Videos. Give me the hype. Give me the hype. Just imagine. You remember the three hours that we watched Summer Game Fest for? Imagine if it was three hours worth watching because it had stuff like this in it. But what if it was just like two minutes of tweets? No, with what links if it was, to the trailers I wanted to watch. What if it was one blog post every 15 minutes throughout the day? I would take that over three no, hours. No, you would not. A hundred percent I would. You wouldn't sit down and go, give me, give me the gaming juice straight in my veins. No, I'd set an alarm every 15 minutes. When we have only the tweets and only the blog posts, we miss moments like Keanu Reeves yes. pointing yes. to someone in the audience and saying, no, you're breathtaking. Yeah, but Keanu That's Reeves what we're missing, Will. That's what shove we're it. giving up. He was in a bad game, Jake. That's he was in a bad fault. game. He, that's his he job. He's, so, he's working. I don't care. Well, he got paid. Our boy got paid. Actors are going to be in bad stuff, but that's because... They need a paycheck just like the rest of us. Yeah. If anyone he, needs a paycheck. I want to be clear. He was possibly the best part of that game. He was great. In it. Best part of that game was uh, turning it off. <laughs> Unity is uh, is merging with a company. Ooh, that, yeah, this is bad. Uh, happens to be the best malware delivery service. If I'm reading this tweet correctly. No, it's not the best, but uh, this is a company. I believe their name is Iron Source. Um, they are on multiple malware lists 
for spreading malware. I, there's actually one of them. I, you guys may have encountered this. I've encountered this several times. One of their most popular malwares is if you go to a uh, Google or Internet Explorer Edge and you type in download Chrome, one of the top links is to a malware site with like a fake like download Chrome button and it you download it and it installs malware. That's this company. I That's what this company it. does. Like like some well, it, like whenever I install a new computer or, or refresh and I'm like I need to download Chrome, like you have to dodge a couple links because they will be. I see it. They'll, they'll I be, see it. That that's them. That's this company, and uh, they are known for this. And uh, the Unity has decided to merge with them because they have uh, some sort of like some other tech they have, like you know. Uh, Things around monetization, making it easier to introduce payments into your software, uh, iterations, etc. And it's it's just kind of this long, the latest in this long trend of Unity under uh, John Ricciello. Is this the guy who then was insulting Ricciello? Unity's programming base? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but this is basically a former EA CEO who is now at Unity, I believe he's been there since 2014, who basically said, if you are not baking monetization into your creative process, then you are, quote, fucking idiots. Yes, quote. it is. Damn. Um, he's basically taken Unity public, tanked the, stank, the, the stock price and the stank price. <laughs> and like, this is just, there are so many devs on Twitter that I'm friends with and that I follow that are just like oh, yeah. well, learning, learning Godot, learning Godot, yeah. learning to unreal. Like unity yeah. is just cratering because they keep making these acquisitions and questionable choices leading towards monetization, NFTs, crypto, all sorts of questionable business decisions that are not focusing on game development. And that is ruining their core base of game developers. Long story short, unity is dying. And I think it is now tipped over the edge in terms of, I, I'm not going to say they can't be saved, but they are definitely more likely to fail now than mm-hmm. they were before. No, I mean, yeah, like you said, we have we've met a lot of developers, we follow, interact with on a daily basis, a lot of game developers from all over the world, and tons. Like the, um, half of my feed today was folks who had previously been in Unity, being like, "Yep, guess I'm switching to Godot, or guess I'm learning Unreal." Um, dev, like. That's what you that's what you really want when you announce something new for your product is all of your clients to just immediately jump ship. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This is just um, this is just bad news all around, which sucks because I feel like Unity has built itself into a, a really nice little game engine um, that a lot of I a lot of people use with but, it a little bit. Yeah. And, and and this is just them saying not good enough. We're going to go in a direction that is questionable. Um, I saw a really good tweet thread where somebody said, hey, look, let's be honest here. Like them merging with this company is not for us game developers. It's for like their shareholders in the stock market Mm -hmm. to like pep up with this press release. Let's go see what they're saying. And I think it was Business Insider that had an article where they were basically just like, this is a terrible decision by a terrible CEO. And it was just like, (laughs) even investors are not buying into this BS. So just not, not a good call. Not good. It seems like Unity won't be so united anymore. Uh, can you play the outro music? It seems like Unity. Uh, <laughs> that's it for the news, folks, which means it's time to play the outro music. Listen, I. We, it's been a bad it, but you know what? We were on it's vacation. Been good. I mean, PETA okay. is flatbread. Um, Look, to be fair, we've been cracking jokes on camera for the last five days straight. Yeah, that's okay. true. So, What's your excuse, so Jake? F- <laughs> uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like I was too preoccupied being pissed off at my fucking computer this entire episode. Um, doesn't matter because it's the end of the episode and I'm going to play the outro music. Folks! Hi! Thanks for watching. This was the show episode 80 can you believe we've done 80 of these things every freaking week since 80 weeks ago i hate it i just wanted to stop um on this week's show was the lovely and talented and probably the greatest man i've ever met jake terrio i didn't know which one of us you were gonna pick i knew it 
I knew it. And also the gutter trash I found in Montreal, Ian Gibson. Hello, bonjour. Bonjour. Apologies to our Canadian audience. <laughs> so um, folks, subpixelfilms.com brings you straight to our link tree where you can see all the delicious and lovely things on it. We will be back Sunday with some, I believe Sunday, with some Father Ian, Father Will. We did some religious movie viewing over our vacation, and oh there are God, games associated do. with these, and we'll be playing them and showing them off. Uh, this Sunday, I'm have to actually tune in this time uh, Jake, for the Lord. You watched Left Behind One and Left Behind Two. Tribulation one of those. Force. <laughs> oh my god! Um, there's... I've read some of the books. Oh, oh. you need to be on. Are they worth reading? No. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Folks, thank they you so much bad. for tuning in. Uh, you can read the Left Behind books on the internet for free <laughs> by googling Left Behind PDF ebook free download. And just throw that on your Kindle and enjoy it. And we will see you all next week.